Cool. Um, hello, friends. Today I'm not going to talk to you about food, but I'm going to talk to you about DAGs, which are a topic that, are, that is very close to my heart. So, um, so one day I was, uh, I was talking to a friend, and um, he said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could, uh, you could draw a Git repository? So you know, draw like a commit and then another commit and like link them together. And I, you know, this would primarily be useful for um, talking about merges or like trying to like demonstrate like some kind of problem with a Git repository. And I was like, this is actually a really good idea. And I got kind of a bit obsessed with it. And I don't actually know anything about any GUI programming, which is why this thing doesn't exist yet. But um, I started wondering like, how would you actually implement the, um, the core like feature of drawing a Git repository and turning it into a thing. So one thing that you should know is that uh, all Git uh, commit graphs are directed acyclic graphs. So what's a directed acyclic graph? A graph is, um, graph has nodes and it has edges, like vertices, uh, vertices and edges. And um, a directed graph is a graph where the edges have po point in a certain direction as opposed to an undirected graph. And a directed acyclic graph is a graph where there are no cycles, a directed graph with no cycles. So here's an example of a directed acyclic graph. So as you can see, so the way uh, graphs work in Git is that uh, a commit points to its parents. So the initial commit in a repository has no parents, and uh, other commits can have multiple parents. So there's, a, there's an example of a, a valid directed acyclic graph. And uh, if I make one small change, it's now no longer a directed acyclic graph because there's a cycle. I can go from C to D to E forever. And this is no good, right? Because if, I, if, a, if a user were to draw something like this, I would have to tell them that, look, this isn't a directed acyclic graph, but like, how would I know? How would I know if a graph is a directed acyclic graph or not? So what I need, right, is I need, first of all, to determine whether or not the graph is a directed acyclic graph. Second, if it's not a directed acyclic graph, I ideally would not want to just tell my, my user, no, sorry, I'd actually be able to tell them what parts of the graph are not directed acyclic graphs. So that would be pretty useful. And if I um, you know, got through all of this and like, it was a valid directed acyclic graph, I need to process them. Because the way that uh, commits work in Git is that a commit contains the hash of its parents. So I'd actually need to hash the parents, like to turn the parents into some kind of hash before like, putting that hash in the child commit. So this is like, this is getting really involved, right? And I'm already like, oh, you know, maybe this is not a good idea. Maybe I should just go do something else. So um, you know, I'm kind of like despairing at this point. So you know, being, being a good programmer, I wonder, hey, may, maybe I'm not the only person in the world that has had this question at some point in time. How do I tell whether a directed graph is acyclic or not? So do the usual thing, right? And you know, I, I'm not the one that asks this question, so it's good. So, like, other people have had this problem. You know, maybe, maybe there's hope. So the first, the first answer, the, the answer, which I actually don't think this is a good answer, but the first answer, the accepted answer, is try to sort the graph topologically. I'm like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? So anyway, I look it up, right? And I go to Wikipedia, I'm like, what's, the, what's a topological sort? So a topological sort is actually like a relatively simple concept. The idea that if a vertex A points to a vertex B, a topological sort of that graph will put vertex A before vertex B. Like not, ne not necessarily next to, uh, next to each other, but in some order. So like this is a graph and this is the directed, like so this is the topological sort. So this vertex points to this one, which points to this one, anyway. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of useful, but if I did that and I like find that it's not a directed acyclic graph, I'd still have to like tell my user, nope, sorry, there's a problem somewhere. Like I don't know where, but somewhere. Like that's it's not good enough. So the next answer is actually like much, much better. So it's like longer, but it also talks about two things. It talks about strongly connected components, and it talks about Tarjan's strongly connected components algorithm. It's like strongly connected components. Like what are those? So a strongly connected component is a subgraph of a directed graph that has cyclic behavior in the sense that you can get from one of those vertexes to another, any one of the other vertex, uh, sorry, yeah, one of the vertices to another one of the vertices like um, in the subgraph. So this is like a directed graph and the, the uh, strongly connected components are um, highlighted. So okay, this is useful. And the other interesting thing is uh, Trajan's algorithm. So this is a pseudocode, so I went to Wikipedia and I just copied it out. It's not, you know, it's not really important that you like look at this, um, but I wanted to point out a couple of things. So first of all, um, it's recursive, so you kind of you kind of call strong connect on each vertex in the graph, and it keeps track of three things uh, for each each vertex. One, its index, so when we first encountered it, the low link, which is the the index of the lowest vertex that you can reach from this node or sorry, this vertex, and whether or not it's on a stack. So it pushes things onto a stack. And um, I'll, you know, I'll demonstrate this in a little bit, but anyway, so just, it does, uh, it checks if, uh, if it's seen something before, and if it's, 
or if, and if it's on the stack, and if it reaches a, if it like goes through the whole thing and finds a vertex whose low link is equal to its index, it'll start a strongly connecting component because that's a root node. But anyway, these are these are all details. Um, the other interesting thing about this uh, thing is that not just not only does it calculate the strongly connected components, but it also performs a reverse topological sort, and uh, it does both these things at the same time, which is pretty amazing. Like it's cool that you can do both these things. So like let's do my problem solved, and also it does this in linear time. So I think it's like actually not possible to do better, but you know, feel free to prove me wrong. I would love to be wrong about this. Like you can't, I don't think you can process a graph faster than you can like go through all the vertices. But you know, maybe you know a way. That would be very interesting. So here's the demonstration. So this is a graph. Um, I like, we'll just remove the, the, um, the label so to make, like, to make it easier. So I'm also, I also have a stack. So first thing I do is I start at the first uh, vertex. So it has an index of one and a low link of one. And then I uh, look at its neighbors. So its first neighbor is uh, node two. So index of two, uh, low link of two. Is everyone, is everyone able to follow me like okay so far? Am I like, too fast, too slow? Going okay? All right, uh, fine. So anyway, so go, we go to two and again, we visit its neighbors. So two's neighbor is three. And then when we, now, now things get interesting, right? Because we go back to one and um, we update the low link, so which is the lowest, the, the lowest vertex that is reachable from three to one. And then we go back because three has no other neighbors to two, which again, we update its low link to one and we reach one again, and like I said, because it's low link and its index are the same, it's the root node, and we start a strongly connected component here. So we do that, and uh, we continue. So we get to vertex four. Uh, I'm using the words vertex and node interchangeably, by the way, I'm sorry if that's confusing. Uh, it just, yeah, it's easier to think about things for me in, uh, in terms of vertices at sometimes and indexes, oh, sorry, nodes at other times. Anyway, we start at four. Four is uh, points to two, but we've already processed two, so it's not on the stack. Um, then we hit three, again, not on the stack, processed it already, and then we reach five. So we put five on the stack, and um, five points back to four, so we update its low link, uh, but five also points to six. So we hop on to six, we forget about five and four for the time being. Uh, six points to three, which we've already processed. Six points to seven, which we haven't processed yet, so seven is updated with the low link of seven. Seven points back to six, uh, so we update its low link, and since we've reached a node whose low link and index are the same, it's a root node, we um, process the, um, sorry, we create a strongly connected component, then we go back to five. Um, again, it's, not, it's already been, but six has already been processed, so we don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, go back to four, it's a root node, we get to four and, uh, four and five, and that leaves eight, which points to itself. That's also um, a root node and it's a strongly linked component. So, great, so that's an example of how it works. By the way, I took this example straight from Wikipedia uh, in the sense where like, I recreated this example, but the graph itself is available on the Wikipedia page uh, as of this writing. So if you want to like, hop on there and see, a, see an animation, that would be, uh, that'd be, that's cool too. Uh, so how is this useful? So in addition to my, my contrived Git example, which is actually uh, an example that I had, like, it's useful in build tools. So whenever you want to build a project, um, either a uh, you know, a, a project like your own project or a project that depends on some other things. You want to like build your dependencies before you build your project itself. So it's not really useful for you to kind of just like try to build something like, oh, no, I depend on something else. Uh, that's a very inefficient build system. So what you want to do is you want to figure out the order in which to build things. And that's exactly like the reverse topological sort of the directed acyclic graph of your dependencies. So that's pretty useful. And you can generalize this. So it's not just build tools, but also data flow processing. So any system that processes data um, needs to do so in some order if, it, if there are data dependencies. So this is really obscure data processing framework that you might have heard of. Uh, it's called TensorFlow, and it also uses the strong gate components algorithm. If you look at, if you look at the source, um, I haven't included it yet because like, the text would be too small. It actually uses an incremental version of the same algorithm that I just described. And you can also use it to solve two sets. So two set is an interesting, um, it's not interesting in and of itself. The idea is that you have a bunch of Boolean clauses of the form X or Y, and you and them all together. So that sounds kind of boring, but the idea is that you can take a more interesting problem and encode it as a Boolean satisfiability problem, and you can solve the Boolean satisfiability problem, which gives you an answer to the original question that you wanted to answer. So this isn't necessarily a directed acyclic graph, but the idea is you can turn like this whole Boolean clause thing into a graph. You can process the graph, and if you find a strongly connected component that contains 
both a variable and its own negation, then this formula is unsatisfiable. There's no like true or false value that you could assign that would make it true. But um, if you don't, then you can assign va uh, values to the true and false variables that will give you a satisfiability, like will give you a model that you can then use to solve the original question that you wanted to answer. So takeaways. One, uh, reverse topological sort is usually the correct order in which to process things in. Like topological sort is also useful in which case you can just reverse the answer that you got. So I think reverse topological sort is the correct default. Um, strong peak and components. So I've talked about these more in the context of directed acyclic graphs, but they're also useful for, um, well, I guess you can, uh, they're actually useful in terms of like other data processing. And sometimes you actually care about the, the elements of the strong peak components. So for example, with the two set problem. And last, Trajan's algorithm. So Trajan is kind of like, he, he's responsible for a lot of great computer science. He has a lot of algorithms, but this is my favorite. And if you, uh, if you look on the Wikipedia page, there's actually like a quote from uh, Donald Knuth, who's like, oh, you know, Trajan's algorithm, it's amazing. So I'm, I'm not alone in my enthusiasm. And uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you.